Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of the Phoenix A320 full flight tutorial series taking you in depth on a flight from Manchester to Prague. In this episode then we are going to look at preparing and briefing our full approach and how we're going to fly the approach into Prague's runway 12. In this video then we'll have a look at the standard arrival route and how we can plan to fly this as well as changing our arrival route as well just to show how we work out which initial approach fix or VIA as it's called in the McDo to choose in case you're flying the aircraft without the uh, the use of Navigraph charts. We'll also show you how to perform a landing calculation so you know that you've got enough stopping distance on the runway that's planned and uh, take you through how that works on the EFB in the Phoenix aircraft. One of the main features of this episode is not just planning the route in terms of what route the aircraft is going to actually fly, but working out when you want to start slowing down, how that top of descent is all calculated and how you can help and aid the aircraft in planning its descent profile so that you capture the ILS and the glide slope at the correct speed and at the right time. So let's get back in the flight deck and have a look. So let's go and have a look now at setting up the uh, arrival and planning how we intend to fly the arrival into Prague. We already have the actual routing confirmed as we set up back in Manchester and barring any air traffic control runway changes we can obviously leave everything set up as, uh, as expected. All we're going to do now is go through, have a look at the arrival charts, make sure that all the coding matches up, and then we're going to have a look to see if there are any constraints and things like that and give the aircraft as much information as possible in order to give us an accurate top of descent and descent profile all the way to our destination. So we are going to be on the Lumkey 6 Papa arrival, obviously coming in via Lumkey, and as we can see from this arrival here, there aren't actually any constraints on the chart, which is quite unusual. Normally there are at least one or two constraints, perhaps either mandatory altitudes you need to be at, at specific waypoints, or altitude ranges you need to be between as you pass through certain waypoints, but for this one itself there aren't any. If you did have a constraint, let's say for some reason there was a uh, an actual constraint here at Prague 956, then what we would see over here on the flight plan page, if we just scroll down and find uh, Prague 956, there it is, what we would actually see here is we would see an altitude here with a little magenta star next to it and that would denote that uh, there is a, uh, a constraint at altitude at that point. We can also have speed constraints as well and you can see here that there is a speed constraint of 250 knots and that is as the aircraft passes through 10,000 feet. What we need to be very clear on are what these altitudes here on the right hand side next to these waypoints mean. These are the altitudes that the aircraft will be at as it passes these altitudes, not what it is anticipating that it will be at. They're the altitudes which the aircraft will be at as it passes through and if you have a constraint that is going to be missed because for whatever you're maybe too high then um, that little star magenta star around the constraint would actually show a amber circle around it. You can go in and edit constraints, add your own and remove constraints by selecting the uh, line side keys here on the right hand side. So let me just give you a quick example. Let's say then at this waypoint Prague 956 we wanted to be at a high altitude of flight level 120. So if here on the chart it said that we had got uh, a constraint there, flight level 120, let's go ahead and see what that would look like. Obviously there isn't one here in real life so we're going to have to kind of make that one up. So let's go ahead and add a constraint in. We'll select just here and we'll add the constraint flight level 120, pop that in there and insert and now if we come back and scroll through the flight plan the constraint is now showing with the little magenta asterisk. 
If for some reason we were unable to make that constraint, then the asterisk would have an amber circle around it. For example, if we then went in and did something daft like the one uh, above it, and we selected something like flight level 300, 30,000 feet, it wouldn't be able to get the aircraft would not be able to get down in time to the uh, to the 956 waypoint at flight level 120. So the amber circle would just tell us that no, that's uh, that's not going to happen. What it would also show is no longer would it show flight level 120 it would show the altitude remember that the aircraft will be at so if it has an asterisk and a little uh, a little amber circle around it then you would need to perhaps go in here see what the constraint actually is and then compare it with what the uh, aircraft will be at altitude wise as it passes through here for now though we can actually leave that constraint in there just because i think if we uh, double checked and cleared that I think the aircraft was planning on being roughly around flight level 120 anyway so for the purposes of this tutorial video I'm happy to leave that uh, 120 constraint in there but let's have a look a little bit further down the approach path so what altitude do we actually want to be in as we're starting to come in well we've already said that SOMIS is our uh, initial approach fix so let's go and have a look at the uh, initial approach picks on the uh, on the chart so what is a good uh, point of reference now is to see that our platform altitude for starting the approach is 4,000 feet 4,000 feet intercepts the glide slope at 8.9 miles from the ILS DME so if we want a nice sort of interception of the glide slope and ideally we want to be uh, under the glide slope as we come in on the localizer to enable us to just capture that glide on the way down then realistically we don't want to be any higher than 4,000 feet once we're 8.9 miles out that is also the waypoint Foxtrot India 1-2 if we come back over here, we can see Foxtrot India 1-2 shown here and 4,000 feet shown there. If we just double check that, we can also see that that is a hard constraint. So that is all planned quite nicely. One of the things though that I do want to think about is the speed. So we aren't going to expect to fly all of the uh, all of the approach around here and down at 250 knots so we can go in and update the flight plan database so we can tell the aircraft you know you need to start planning our descent so that you are aware that we are going to start slowing the aircraft down a little bit for example once i am at around 8.9 miles out 4,000 feet realistically on the glide slope I want flaps 2 out in order to get flaps 2 out nice and safely I want to probably be at around 180 knots so if we go ahead now back over to our flight plan page to find this we can see that it's got speed of 185 in there that's okay that's not too bad but I can perhaps refine that just a little bit and tell it well let's make that a hard constraint for the speed pop 180 knots in there insert that and that now means that the aircraft has a little bit more information in order to plan its descent profile all the way down it also says that here at uh, CI 12 and uh, just above it at Prague 962 that the speeds it expects us to have is at Prague 962 250 knots obviously the repeat dashes tell us 250 knots is expecting to fly at 962 well that's all right but realistically I would want to with only uh, five miles to go until we intercept that glide slope we can see five miles to go from adding the three miles there two miles there and there is a tutorial on the channel with regards to chart reading if you want a little bit more information on that I would kind of like to be at this point really around green dot speed which is usually usually around 210 220 so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it actually at 962 I want you to sort of plan things out so that I don't want to be flying 250 knots at that point I want to be flying around 210 knots that also gives me the ability to get flaps one out as well so let's go ahead and insert that we've now got 210 knots planned just here and then 180 knots planned just here but looking over on the chart then 210 knots 
180 knots. So we're telling the aircraft we are slowing down. That means now then for uh, our approach planning and how I'm going to fly this approach, I am aiming to be at green dot speed by here and flaps to and 180 knots by here. We've got that all thought out and planned. We can even here in the Phoenix, if we want to, we can go ahead and actually annotate everything so if I want to pop a green dot literally around that waypoint so I know that that's the point that I want my green dot to uh, speed I've also got a uh, speed constraint here that I've decided to fly of 180 knots I can go ahead and mark that up as uh, as well and just so if uh, the workload is high for instance if we're coming in you are on VATSIM and you've got air traffic control lots of different things, things going off we've now clearly just got a little picture there on the uh, on the EFB saying this is the plan that's the plan we're going to stick to we want to make sure we're green dot by here as we leave here then we can pull flaps one the aircraft is then going to be slowing down to 180 knots and flaps two as we intercept the glide slope at 4,000 feet now we've gone ahead and and uh, worked out how we're going to fly the approach and we've told the aircraft how I plan to fly the approach it means that the top of descent indicator that we get on the navigation display and in our flight plan is now really accurate because it knows that we're going to start slowing down perhaps a little bit earlier than initially planned which means that the aircraft has probably brought that top of descent indicator just forward a little bit to give us time to slow down as well so that is how we've planned the the arrival that's how we've sort of manipulated the flight plan and told the aircraft how we're going to uh, fly the arrival as well the only other thing to do then is a landing uh, calculation so here on the tablet we've got our uh, arrival performance we can go ahead and select this and we are going to make sure that we have enough runway to stop given the weight that the aircraft will be at when we uh, when we land so this usually isn't a problem on longer runways but if you're coming into somewhere like Jersey for example with a short runway or Gibraltar then this becomes really important and by law all pilots do a landing calculation anyway so the weather currently in Prague is dry, so we can go ahead and select dry. We're going to be arriving on runway 1-2. We can get the uh, the latest weather just by clicking apply meta. Of course, if you do this early in the flight and you know that the weather's changed, particularly over longer flights, you can refresh the meta over here. And we've got the actual written meta showing down here as well. So all we need to do next then is enter the landing weight now what the Airbus doesn't do is give you the landing weight as an actual figure anywhere we have to do a little bit of maths for this and the way to do that is to come down here on the flight plan page to have a look at how much fuel the aircraft estimates you're going to be landing with so we can see here this is actually a nice figure it tells us we're going to be landing with four tons of, uh, of fuel on board so let's have a look at our current fuel on board just there so we've currently got 5140 kilograms of fuel on board if we then subtract four tons which is 4000 kilograms that is a difference then of 1140 kilograms or to round that uh, to round that off let's call that uh, 1.1 tons so what we're going to do now is we are going to subtract 1.1 tons of fuel off our gross weight. We're not going to lose any other weight than fuel unless you start to throw passengers out of the aircraft. So we're going to subtract 1.1 tons off our current gross weight. Our current gross weight of course is shown here at 61.4 minus 1.1 that gives us an answer of 60.3 so our landing weight is going to be around 60.3 tons always again better to be conservative so let's calculate for a slightly higher instead of 60.3 let's go for 60.5 we'll pop in here then 60.5 and the moment it does that the tablet then starts giving us our stopping distances so for example you can change the uh, the braking conditions so this is set with uh, low auto brakes medium auto brakes manual maximum auto brakes 
if you are doing a an auto land for example everything you're seeing here on the on the EFB are your current selected options so I'm planning auto brake low no uh, thrust reverse auto thrust will be on when we land it'll be a flat full configuration and it will be a manual landing that tells me that that is going to be our uh, our stopping distance is uh, oh sorry uh, the amount of runway we're going to use to stop 2042 meters landing distance available is 3250 meters so that is absolutely fine we've got no issues with that we're going to stop in plenty of time and with that we can uh, turn the auto brake to low as that is what we're going to be using as we uh, as we come in so with that we've run our landing calculations we have briefed the approach we know exactly how we're going to fly the approach we've uh, told the aircraft how we're going to fly the approach as well and just added in a couple of uh, things to help it calculate an accurate descent profile all that's left to do now is wait until we get to our top of descent and then we can head our way down Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you have enjoyed this latest video in the tutorial series. If you do have any questions, please do leave a comment down below and I'll come back to try and answer them for you. And of course, if you have found it useful, please do hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any future content and live streams. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.